Logic Pro Mix Tips and Tricks. Today, I want to talk to you guys about editing lead vocals. Um, pretty much, this is drag. I'm going to play the vocals for you. It's a reference. Uh, so you can hear how this goes. You can hear it. Said I'm like touche, touche. We can do this two ways, two ways. And I ain't tryna play games, play games. No, but if you wanna start, let's go. Said I'm like touche, touche. We can do this two ways, two ways. And I ain't tryna play games, play games. No, but if you wanna start, let's go. Uh, so that's basically um to lead vocal on a hook. Um. And uh, that's basically the way the, the, the track goes. Now, on this vocal, I'm going to let you hear it raw so you can hear what it sounds like without all the effects. <clears throat> take everything off. And now you can hear it. And I ain't trying to play games, play games, no But if you want to start, let's go Said I'm like two So as you can hear, it's pretty raw um, And there's a lot of middle, middle frequencies in there uh, A lot of things going on But for lead vocal primarily um, the, the things that I add to it uh, Would be EQ That's essential uh, Compression that's essential. Um, and then after that, there are some nice effects that I add uh, that I'm going to let you guys know about. So for those of you trying to or striving to get into the mixing world and getting into being an engineer or an audio engineer, I'm going to give you some, some little quick, uh, quick things you can have loaded up within your preset channel to uh, bring out the vocal a little bit. So one of the first things that I added to this vocal was the EQ. Um, now, when it comes to EQs, it really depends upon, you know, how the, the track sounds, how the vocal you're dealing with sounds. But for the most part, uh, a lot of engineers would begin with uh, cutting out these low frequencies. Um, and the reason why this happens, and the reason why we place a high-pass filter on these vocals um, is because um, if you're dealing with a track that you have the stems to or the splits to um, you want your kick drum to really come through you want your bass line to really come through um, in the mix and you want it to sit well you want the vocals to sit itself position very well so the reason why we immediately throw a high pass filter on it and take out these uh, low frequencies most of the time is just to, to get it out the way. Um, majority of the time people's vocals don't have frequencies in this range that need to be heard so immediately a high pass filter is applied. Now that's not to say that um, on a particular track you can't have these frequencies um, in or you know move them up a little bit or something but most of the time as a preset I would start with a high pass just to get rid of those low frequencies and free up the bass and the kick drum. Um, now here I boosted a little bit around 2500 hertz. Um, boosted that by 1.5 dB here just to bring out that higher presence um, in the vocal. If you listen to a lot of mixes um, from the industry now today, a lot of urban mixes, you'll hear that they bring out a lot of the clarity top end of vocals and that's really where um, the, the the more crisp sound comes into play so with this particular vocal uh, I boosted over here by uh, 2500 Hertz and um, it makes a little a little uh, impact so I'm gonna play it just so you can hear it <clears throat> Touché. Uh, let me add it there we go too shake, too shake. We can do so, two ways, two ways. You can hear it's it's minimal. Games, it's a minimal effect. Games, no. But if um, you wanna start, let's go. Set them like two shake, two But it did something. We can do this two ways. Bypass it. Two shake, two shake. We can do this two ways, two ways. Now with it. Two shake, 
two shack. We can do this two ways, two ways. So you can hear it, it did a little change to the vocal here. So that's the first thing I would add to this. Secondly, um, the next thing I would add would be a compressor. <clears throat> now when it comes to compressors, there's so many different things you can do. Um, I mean, there's, there's just a ton of things you can do. But majority of it, it all depends upon the vocal once again. Uh, how fast you want it to attack, how fast you want it to release. The ratio. Um, there's a tutorial um, that I have coming dealing with totally on compressors. So if you want to know more about compressors, I have a tutorial coming specifically um, designed to teach you about compressors and what they're for, what they're used for, and how you can adjust it. Um, I have a tutorial that I did prior about um, EQ, and it'll go in depth about EQ and, and what that's about and how to use it and how to, you know, use your filters. So, same thing with compression. You have an attack, a release, a threshold ratio. Not all compressors um, carry the graph and the meter and all that stuff, but this is a stock compressor that came with Logic and um, it's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's not too bad. So this automatically begins to add some punch to the vocal. It does some amazing things. So you can listen to it without. Two shake, two shake. We can do this two ways, two ways. Now with it. Two shake, two shake. We can do this two ways, two ways. And I ain't trying to play games, play games, no. But if you want to start, let's go. Set them like two shake, two shake. Now, as you can see, there's not really much movement happening here in the meter um, to, to really affect things. So what you could do here is if I wanted to, I could move my it's threshold. Two shake, two shake. Two shake, we can do this two ways, two ways, and I ain't trying to play games, play games, no. But if you want to start, let's go. Set them like two shake, two shake, we can do this two ways. And by me moving the threshold, I just, in fact, moved the response time of the needle. Um, as far as you can see, you can visibly see how quick the release is and how quick the attack is. But that's the next thing I add to a lead vocal, compressor. Uh, after that, uh, so EQ and compressor is the most important things that you want to add to, to your, your vocal track. Now, the next thing that I add is something called an exciter. And actually, this is a stock plugin with Logic as well. Uh, I'm striving to deal with more stock plugins um, so that way there y'all can really, you know, use this stuff in your everyday life because I know a lot of people can't afford um the expensive gear and that's why you know home studios are so great these days because it takes all of that expensive equipment from recording studios and it brings it to us in a nice format so um, this stock uh, plugin that comes with Logic Pro uh, it's called the Exciter and um, it, it it does a great thing it highlights those frequencies that are in the um, high range so it, it's sort of like taking a high pass filter um, and applying it uh, to a, a large region of your EQ so let me show you what happens here play the track with the exciter two shake two shake we can do this two ways two ways and I ain't trying to play games play games no but if you want to start let's go set them like two shake two shake we can do this two ways two ways and I ain't trying to play games play games no but if you want to start let's go so now you can see that as I adjust this it's changing the actual timbre of the the, the vocal um, it's highlighting some frequencies that maybe you weren't hearing before. Um, and so this is a great tool to, to kind of beef up the vocal a little bit. And a lot of industry professionals use this to just just layer, just it's kind of create that, that beefy, um, more powerful layered effect to a, a, a lead vocal. So you add this on to your track, um, and it gives it a nice good sound. So I just added a little bit of that. Um, next thing is reverb. Reverb is so relative. I mean, you can do whatever you want. 
with reverb. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? When it comes to reverb, I'll have another tutorial about some great reverbs that are outside of Logic Pro that you could use inside. But just for this lead vocal um, and this tutorial, this is a stock reverb plugin here, uh, Space Designer. And um, what I pretty much did is just, I dialed back on the, the reverb portion just back to negative 29 dB. So I kept a, enough of it so you could hear it, but not too much. So this is what you have. Two shack, two shack, we can do this two ways, two ways. And I ain't trying to play games, play games, no. But if you want to start, let's go. Set and you can hear it there. Two shack, two shack, we can do. So it, it dramatically changes, of course, the sound of the vocal. Two shack, two shack, we can do this two ways, two ways, and I ain't trying to play games, play games, no. But if you want to start, let's go. Set them like two shack, two shack. All right, so now, after you add that to your lead vocal, so remember this is EQ, uh, compressor, exciter, um, and reverb. Four things already on the track. Now. The next uh, thing, and this is the last um, plugin that I have that you can use, in, you know, in Logic Pro to put on your lead vocal, is called a noise gate. And um, the noise gate is a great thing because for many years, um, before I got into mixing vocals and whatnot, when I first started, I was trying to figure out how to get rid of breaths. Um, I was working with a rapper at the time, and when he rapped, um, he breathed very heavily um, in the parts where he wouldn't say words. So he would be rapping, rapping. Then when he stopped rapping, all I heard was him breathing. And I'm like, man, how do I get rid of him breathing in those spaces? So me, I, it's just starting out, I would blow up the, the WAV file, go in and literally try to cut out all of the open spaces all of the open spaces and you, as you can imagine this took a ton of time so uh, of course as time went on and I got more experienced I learned about the noise gate now this noise gate isn't necessarily the best noise gate that Logic Pro um, has given us but it does what it needs to do now what the noise gate does is it cuts off those frequencies that you kinda hear is in those spaces so in other words when I play this track you're gonna hear it um, take it off two shack two shack we can do this two ways two ways and I ain't trying to play games play games no but it now in the in between here the no you can hear a breath right now when I apply a noise gate just watch what it can do Two shack, two shack, we can do this two ways, two ways, and I ain't trying to play games, play games, no, but if you want to start, let's go. Now, in between there, you can hear the breath, but it's more, it's more faint, it's more subtle. So now when I bring in the music, um, back into the, into the track, it's not as dominant. You can't hear it as much. And actually, you can cut as much frequency as you want as long as it don't sound choppy because if you start two cutting shack, too much two shack, we can do this two ways two way then you'll hear games, nothing play games no but if you want to start let's go set them like two shack two shack we can do this two ways so you want to keep enough in there so you can hear it but not so much and so that's that's the the objective of the noise gate and of course you can adjust attack hold and release when it comes to your noise gate just as you can with a compressor and it, it works phenomenally so you want to add that on now so far we've got EQ compression reverb exciter and a noise gate uh, the next thing that I say you, you must add because in order to do any type of music on radio or get it placed in these these times you need to have your vocals in perfect pitch um, so what I do is simple. I open up AutoTune. I find out the key of my song. The key of your song is very important because if your if your vocals um, don't align up with the proper key as your music, you're gonna have something weird going on, and uh, it's gonna be noticeable right off the bat to someone that has the ear to hear it. 
Um, but I opened up the AutoTune Effects plugin, and uh, I just found the key that it was in E flat. And um, here you can move it from pitch correct, soft effects, or hard effects. I chose to put on hard effects just to make sure everything was locked in. So when you listen to it, Touche, touche, we can do this two ways, two ways, and I ain't trying to play games, play games, no, but if you want to start, let's go. So you can automatically hear uh, it correcting the pitch, wherever it was off, it just fixed it right up, and that's the beauty of auto-tune. Many people abuse auto-tune, but the beauty of it is it gets your vocals right in pitch where it needs to go. Now something else that I added to this um, track that uh, I really enjoy, I love this plugin here, the DUI Shape plugin. This plugin here is awesome because what it allowed me to do was, I was listening to a, a, another mix um, and when you listen to a lot of mixes, and that's something you've got to do as an audio engineer, listen to other mixes from other engineers and you'll be able to pick up things um, in the sound that they do with the vocals that um, you know a lot of people miss and what I noticed is that um, they tend to boost a lot of the high end they tend to give you a really crisp clear high end and that's what ultimately creates a, a nice vocal when you have that high end that comes through and it's crisp and it's clear and it's not too piercy on the ears, it's not too punchy, it just sits well in the mix. So what I did was I got this DUI shape plugin, which is great, and I went in and uh, I began to boost over here by the uh, 5991 hertz area. And when I boosted that, it created more of a, a crisper effect. So I'm going to let you hear this. Touche, touche, we can do this too. Touche, 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 we can do this two ways, two ways, and I ain't trying to play games, play games, no, but if you want to start, let's go, set them like touche, touche, we can do this two ways, two ways, and I ain't trying to play games, play games, no, but if you want to start, let's go. So you can automatically hear there that by adding this DUI shape, it took the, the vocal just to a whole nother uh, place as far as clarity and crispness of the sound goes. And that's those these are the plugins I use on lead vocals um, uh, just to get just to get things going. I use this as a preset just to, to set kind of the mood um, when you have an artist come in and they're ready to record and you want to throw some quick effects on but you you know you, you know you got to tweak things this is a nice preset that I use of plugins just to get a nice sound so that's EQ compression uh, reverb uh, an exciter auto tune noise gate and the DUI shaper so um, that's pretty much how I, I start off with my lead vocals and from there I make fine tunes and edits and we come to a finished product but for you audio engineers that are just getting into music and just getting into mixing um, this is a good lineup so I just wanted to give you guys this tip um, on how to do this until next time guys take care